Hello, thank you for watching. We'd like to take a moment to uh, fill you in on what's been going on. We've been getting messages and of people asking how Tom is doing, uh, and we want to fill you in. So Tom will fill you in. Well, might as well start at the beginning. About, I'd say a month ago, yeah. I had a sore throat. So I'd gotten some antiseptic spray and I had a, some sort of allergic reaction to it. So I'd be rushed to the emergency room and my throat had closed up. I was on the verge of not being able to breathe. So after a lot of different shots and all sorts of things, antibiotics, steroids, antihistamines, they were able to get my throat to go back down. And while I was in there, um, I was in the ICU for three nights. Three or four days, yeah. Yeah, I'm not even sure if it was such a blur. They said there was something wrong with my eyes and asked me if I knew about it. I said, no, I mean, my vision's not the best, but... So after I got out of the hospital, after three or four eye doctors in a row, each one would say, oh, you got to go see the specialist in this emergency. I ended up at a glaucoma specialist, and he said, if I didn't have emergency surgery right away, I'd end up going blind within days. So, of course, I went and had that done, and that was just two weeks ago. And I finally don't have a patch over my eye. It was my right eye that was the worst that had the surgery. This eye is about 75%, and this eye after the surgery is about what it was right before the surgery, which was only like maybe 20%, and that's probably the best it's ever going to be. So I just see light and dark, and some things I can see, like outlines and huge text. Maybe I can read, but it's got to be big. But the surgery was basically to save the eye so I don't completely go blind in that eye. And then they're monitoring this eye, which is doing okay but it could it's it's on the beginning stages of glaucoma as well so that's where i am today i'm able to see and again being a graphic artist that's been limiting what he can do to yeah, almost I, nothing to nothing because i need to be able to see in order to design stuff that i do every day and now it's improving it is improving but i don't know if it'll ever be back to good enough to do a lot of graphic design but I think it will be good enough to do some. Yeah. It'd be strenuous to be doing it all day long again. But I think within the next week or two, I will be able to do some. So, so that brings us to where we are today when we got the opportunity to go to this show uh, and bring all of our products. We jumped at the chance and uh, that's coming up this Saturday, March 23rd at 306 Boston Road. We've been making all of our products. Well, we had to make sure we had enough of uh, lip balm and candles and oh, soap. That's and another thing. Someone was asking us just a week ago if we make all our own products, and the answer is yes. Yeah, everything. We absolutely do. Right down to the labels, the honey soap, we even the print lip the bombs. We even do the printing on the <laughs> labels. So, so, yeah. We do make everything ourselves. Yeah. And uh, so that's coming up this uh, weekend. If you can make it on out to see us, we're going to be there all day, 306 Boston Road in Bill Ricca. That's Bill Ricca Nutrition. And uh, it'd be nice to see you. Yeah, we'll have everything with us, all our honey products, um, some Hippie Explorer products, pay dirt, hats, shirts, a lot of Easter presents, yep. gift bags, gift boxes. We've and been we've... working around the clock to get that ready. Uh, so... It Did, should be a lot of fun. Can we just also mention thank you to all the people that gave us lunch funds? Yes, in the thank last you couple to the weeks. donations and lunch funds. That, uh, it relieved a lot of pressure off of us where we haven't been able to work much. Yeah. Yeah. And we just wanted to say a special thank you to you and people who placed orders. I mean, the support's been great. Yes, thank you very much. It's uh, overwhelming. Definitely. Okay, well, let's get on with the show. We're going to the beach. We're going to look at some kites. And welcome thank you for watching I'm Wes this is Tom this is the hippie Explorer we travel around New England exploring looking for gold and other things 
and this week is going to be something a little different. We are heading to Hampton Beach, New Hampshire to the Kites Over New England event that is being held today. And people, uh, kite flyers from all around New England uh, go to Hampton Beach and they compete. And uh, I've never been to one, so we're going to check that out. While we're there, we're going to look for some gold on the beach, bring home some uh, heavies, black sand, and see if we can find some gold in it. Now, um, one of our viewers, Dina, flies a kite in the event here today. Hopefully we can uh, find her. And uh, also, hit that subscribe button. I noticed that 50% of you are not subscribed. So hit, hit, uh, hit that subscribe button. It helps us out, helps us grow. YouTube shows our channel to more people. And sometimes they kick subscribers off for whatever reason. So make sure you're subscribed. And we're gonna show you some scenes uh, on the way to the beach. Let's go. We made it to the beach, and there's a few people out here flying kites. There's not much wind today, so I don't know how well they're going to be able to fly kites without much wind, but there is a breeze. I'll show you. So there's a little wind. I think that's enough to fly a kite. Kites are flying. So we're going to walk around here a little bit. We'll show you some of the different kites. I think it's early yet. And we'll uh, see if we can find Dina. If she's here yet. I think she lives up in Rumford. So it's a little bit of a ride for her to get here. We're out here in front of the Ashworth Hotel. If you're familiar with Hampton Beach. my kite I'm flying here I mean it's so these kites are so easy to fly this one here I'm just standing here I think I got the hang of it I mean it's effortless it really flies easy
this is your kite. What, you, what do you call this one? This is a Celestial Gardens Boreal Kite. Celestial Garden Boreal Kite. Really pretty. You said that's silk screened, huh? Yep. Uh, I do silk screening. Beautiful day out here at the beach. Hampton Beach. I play pinball over there at the Playland Arcade, but it's not open right now. All the different kites out here. And I flew a kite today. Dina gave me some tips. It flew real easy. I mean, not like the kites I had when I was a kid. These things fly great. Look at them up here. Now that's a unique kite. What uh, what do you call that? I have no idea. <laughs> I know it's an astroglide. An astroglide? Yeah. It's a different kind of shape. It is. And it flies beautiful. Yeah, it's a nice looking kite. Well, it's a beautiful day out here on the beach. A lot of people are flying kites from the kites over New England, all different kinds. It's a great day. We're gonna need some crumpets. And I didn't see any black sand around here. I've been looking hard not to look for the black sand. We may still look for that. But we're gonna go back and maybe have a beef stick. Time for a crumpet, ocean crumpets beef stick. I'm going to have our crumpets. We're taking a break inside here because it's a little chilly today and windy. And the wind picked up enough so everybody's got their kites up. There's some really big kites up here, 30, 40 feet long. Well, the kites were great over at the Kites Over New England event. We saw all different kinds there. Now we are further south on the beach. Here we are. And I'm looking for this purple sand, dark sand. I'm going to try. I forgot my pan at the house. So I'm going to scoop up some of this dark purple sand that you see here and bring it back to the house and pan it out and see if we can find any gold in it. Because you got to come in. When you're coming here, you might as well see if you can find gold. I'm going to take this purple sand. I heard the purple stuff. I heard the purple stuff. I'm gonna take some from here. It's 
day to bring your kids out to scream on the beach. Purple sand. Now I was told by somebody up here that up here at the high water mark where you'll see all the darker purple sands, there's a lot of garnets. That's where the heavies are sitting. So that's what I've been scooping. A lot of this dark purple sand up here where the heavies get left and the lights get washed back. And we'll see if there's anything in it. We're going to bring it back to the house and see. What do you think? Let's do it. We're back from the beach and we got our sand from the beach. It was a lot of fun up there. I had forgot to bring a pan with me, so that's why I'm panning it here at the house. Tom is inside getting some orders ready to go and because uh, we got to make some deliveries. So let me pour this water. I got a little soap in the water. And I'll scoop up some sand here. See if we can find anything. I took this from up near the high water mark. There was a lot of dark sands there, so I'm hoping this heavy's there. We'll see. Someone's over there running something today. Weed whacker or something. I'm getting down to the black sand. All right, let me see if I see anything in this pan. I do see gold. Let me show you. right there put some water over it there you can see it a little better see it right there here's a piece of gold now let me get my snuffer bottle so there was gold in that i wasn't sure if i'd see anything Let me wash it back one more time here. I'm going to go a little bit easier and slower on the next pans now that I know there's gold in it. Because it takes a long time to get, yeah, there's another piece of gold. pieces. Well, I'm going to continue doing that and we'll see what we find. Okay, second pan. I got some gold uh, and a bigger piece. Let's take a look. Right there. See it? 
I'm gonna keep panning here and we'll see I've got you know I've got quite a bit left and might be a job for the micro mat but by the time I get it set up I'll be done so I'm just gonna keep panning it out and see what happens I mean it was only a you know a fifth of a bucket maybe and we'll see what's in it let me keep going You can see the black sand in there. See that? A lot of black sand. Let's see what's in it. Nothing in that one. Well, I found another small piece. Um, I did like two pans with nothing. And then this one. Let me show you. Hey, right there. See it right in the middle of the screen? Right there. And the black sand is black. I mean, it's there's some reds. And there is definitely gold in it. Now, at first I was thinking, oh, maybe my pan was contaminated and there wasn't any gold in it. But after doing two pans with nothing, I found some gold. So there is gold in that material. Now, I'm not, evidently there's not a lot in the material I got, but there could be higher concentrations in other places there. So I'm going to keep going and see we can find we got three pieces uh out of a just like a fifth of a bucket i just scooped up some stuff with my hand when i was there um, and we can narrow it down and see i know what's in that area now and next time i'll try a different area but let's keep going and see what we get well i'm all done i did the last couple pans i did them kind of quick because it's very time consuming and tedious going through that sand it would probably be better if i ran them through a micro mat or something um and all i found was those three specks that i had found three small pieces that i found <clears throat> uh, there might have been more because i did it kind of fast but uh evidently that area isn't that rich but i have talked to people that have found even small nuggets on the beach in certain locations so uh, definitely not there I would look more around rocks um, where it can get stuck and trapped Tom's making a uh, some dinner he's making some we made a turkey it's funny every time we go to the beach it's the day after we make a turkey name something people take with them to the beach turkey so we brought turkey to the beach, but we didn't need it there. It's a turkey salad, so we're gonna go have something to eat. Let's do it. I'd like to take this time to thank our members, those who hit that join button. These names you see on the screen are those members, and they are special people. These people help us to continue making these videos if you'd like to be on this screen hit that join button and become a member thank you
we are in a different place this time. We uh, had a good time up at the beach. Tom made a turkey salad. Did the beach and turkey go together? Let's give it a try. Mm. Fantastic turkey salad. But it was great going up to the beach and seeing the kites over New England. And Dina, thanks for inviting us up there to meet everyone. And uh, we found some gold on the beach in Massachusetts. Imagine that. So thanks for coming along and joining us on this uh, different episode uh, of us traveling and exploring New England. Check out the hippie.com, get yourself some honey. We had our honey and our coffee earlier today, but we didn't show you. Hippie will be upset about that, but that's the way it goes. Oh, and we forgot to do a weather report. We better get his weather report right now. Hey, all you groovy dudes and you slap happy hippies. This is Hippie, and I'm here to give you the weather. A very late, late weather report, because they were out there flying kite. Go fly a kite. Here we go. It's going to be a beautiful day. Go fly a kite. So why don't you go do that? And uh, you can make some nice turkey salad. Bring turkey to the beach. Everybody likes to bring turkey to the beach. Now, I don't like being forgotten and kicked off, kicked off like an old shoe to the end of the video here. So uh, you better not do that again. And uh, you missed the honey. So I got a lot of complaints. That's about it. Thank you, Hippie, for that marvelous late weather report. Thank you all for coming out, and we'll see you next time. Peace.